three, two, one. Good morning. Look <laughs> at that. We are back in the studio, both of us together. Yep. It's been a while since we had this setup because obviously we're back from Spain, but you yep. got to remember that the week before that, more than a week before that, I had left to go to Austin and yeah, I haven't so come back since then. <laughs> we haven't done the show here in almost three weeks, yeah. two and a half. It's been pretty awesome. Uh, Eric, thank you very much for the, what are those? Uh, bits. What bits. I keep messing you? up. Cheering with bits. I don't know. Listen, I've been gone for a week, so like the whole lingo. I kind of lost. I haven't answered an email. (laughs) This is actually the second time that I've opened my computer since I left for Spain, which feels fantastic. Thank you to everyone who has already gotten us this far through the hype train. And I think we are about to hit. Oh, it stopped at 97% hype train level five. Uh, But we are almost there. Carla Marie, do we have drinks today? We do. There's a bottle of vodka. Oh, is it cold at least? It's a little cold. A little cold. Like how long? Like it was in the fridge? I put it in the freezer for like 20 minutes. That's not going to do anything. It's better than nothing. <laughs> uh, there we go. You know what? Let's start nice. off with some Fuck. Oh wait, cervezas. I, I should, no, those are beers. I should have got a lemon. No, it's too late. It's too late. Why? I was like, I wish I had something to mix it. We're raw dogging this vodka. Oh, there's so many things. Ugh. We will get into uh, all of our adventures coming up in a little bit. I'm gonna I feel like Saddle Cocktail Club is going to watch this and be very mad that we're just taking straight up vodka shots instead of one of their delicious Well, we, they didn't make us one. We are. <laughs> I'll go by today and pick one up after my orthodontist appointment. All right. Oh, also, at, right before we do this, did you just slurp into the microphone? Yeah, like orthodontist because I was my list. That, please don't do that again. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> um... Before we take the shot, since we did mention Seattle Cocktail Club, we do have another (laughs) event going on with Seattle Cocktail Club. And regardless of where you live, it's all going to be the same. We're all going to be hanging out together virtually playing some drag queen bingo again. My family's going to watch all together, I think, and play at the same house. So boozy drag queen bingo. All right. Carla Marie is going to put the link in the chat in a second. Uh, If you are watching this on YouTube later, we'll have... A link in our newsletter and our socials, all of that good stuff. And could we do that in a? We could put that in the YouTube description as well, right? We can. All right. But wait, where did you tell? Where did you say it's going to be? I said our newsletter, our socials, all of our stuff. Already. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is going to be themed for Halloween. So we hope you guys can all make it. So it's October, so you're okay with officially celebrating Halloween? Yeah, now we can absolutely. Okay. Um, and as we get to do that, do you have the link yet, Carla Marie? No, I'm locked on a Twitch, apparently. Okay, well, we'll get it. Someone will put the link in there in a second. Uh, Fred the Mailman. Got to shout him out because he tweeted us over the weekend because his Ohio State Buckeyes traveled to the great state of New Jersey Mm -hmm. and put an absolute whooping on this little old football team that dresses in scarlet. (laughs) What are their names? I don't, I don't know. The Rutgers Stupid Knights. <laughs> Shut up, ass. <laughs> uh, what was the final score? 56-13, something like that? Uh, something along those lines. It was a lot to a little. It was, it was a lot. Um, it wasn't even really a football game. Yeah. I'm not like sad because I'm used to that. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, exciting when they were winning things. But now it's just like, oh, okay, we're back to where we were. Yeah, two losses in a row. Ah, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. That's who they are. Thank you, Andre. Okay, I'm I'm in to Twitch. You're in finally. Fifty two thirteen. Thank you, Sonali. You know, I spent about forty five minutes resetting my mom's Twitch account when I was home. Did it work? Did you finally get it set up? Yeah, it's just unbelievable how old people cannot do things. Well, it took you forty five minutes. Oh, there we go, Claire and Olympia. Thank you very much for no. sending the link in there, Carla Marie. You can stop now. You can give it up. Just just let it go. I'm in. <laughs> as you start talking about old people who can't do the internet. Ugh. Okay. Uh, Ricky's in here as well. And as we do this shot, we are actually going to play the birthday song because it is my brother Michael's birthday today. Happy birthday! Cheers, Carla Marie. Cheers, Michael.
You're right there, Carla Marie. We're, we'll wait. It's okay. <laughs> uh. That was just straight up vodka. It wasn't that bad, though. God, that's for idiot college students. <laughs> no, college students are not drinking Tito's. College students, and this is, I actually had a conversation with my brother about this. The move originally, when you were like broke or trying to save a lot of money as you drink, <laughs> which is now for us, but the move is to usually get like one or two high quality drinks, mm -hmm. right? To get your buzz going. And after that, once you actually hit that wall where you're like, oh, I'm drunk now. You go well vodka, well tequila, because it's all the same at that point. You're just going to have a worse hangover. In college, I drank either beer or Captain and Coke. Captain and Coke was a big deal. Probably because at that point, like, you don't know what good alcohol is. And Captain Morgan's is fine. But... It's an easy thing to remember, too. Captain and Coke is easy. And it's a decent tasting drink that's usually pretty cheap. Yeah. So that's not bad. Okay. All right. Are we so ready to talk about <laughs> Malaga? Are you okay, Carla Marie? Yeah. So we got through uh, Boozy Brink Bingo, Halloween-themed. Boozy Drag Bingo. Boozy Drag Bingo. Mm -hmm. We got through my brother's birthday, so happy birthday yep. to Michael. And I want to show everyone the view that we had while we were hanging out in Malaga. This is the view from our little balcony. So my whole family was staying in this Airbnb. <laughs> you need to stop using the word little before things that are actually cool. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, that was our view of the, what was it, the Algorin Sea? Al, uh, it's the Mediterranean, but it's the Alborin. Al, no, it's no. Alborin. <laughs> <laughs> like Alborland? You did, wait, it, no, it is. <laughs> that is it. Wait, you guys kept doing this to me. Uh, but that's where we stayed. It was a beautiful place, and I had never been to Spain. You had never been to Spain either, right, Carla Marie? No. Uh, the first. Yeah, jerk, read that. Is it Alborin? Okay, it's the probably Alborin probably Alborin or something. Alborian? I don't know how no, to say that. No, there's no... Um, but Spain was beautiful. Yeah. We stayed there. We went to Sevilla, mm -hmm. also known as Seville. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to, what was the other place? Cordoba? No, we didn't go there, though. My family went there. I didn't. Me, you, and Anthony, myself, and Michael played hooky that day and just went to the beach and saw a lot of boobs. A lot of boobs. <laughs> a lot of boobs. A lot of boobs on the beach there. Um, and where was the, the third city? Granada. That we Granada. Now, the interesting thing with all of those places is that they are... They're very old or cities. Grenada. They're very old cities. Mm. And they've got beautiful castles and churches from like hundreds of years ago. But when when city planners built cities back then, I don't know if people were smaller. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> they didn't have cars. They didn't have cars. They just rode horses. Um, the streets are very, very narrow. Now, we had seven people on this vacation. Myself, Carla Marie, my brother Michael, my brother Justin, his girlfriend, and my parents. So we had this like Mercedes van. Like a, it was called a tra what was it called? Traveler van. We found something out the name. like that. Yeah. yeah. And I had to navigate this big ass van through these little ass streets. No, we should not have been on the streets, but and Google it was... Maps doesn't tell you let you put in like the size of your vehicle. <laughs> and all of a sudden we just turn and we're like, uh. And it we got were, real sketchy. The tires were on each little curb, and there's we had to put the front mirrors in and the tires were on each curb so we were just squeaking down streets but it truly was like we were in a cartoon because locals would come out and be like oh and they would help us mm -hmm. get down the street by the way everyone in spain is like the nicest they were very nice way nicer in spain <laughs> than they were in uh, switzerland <laughs> and switzerland we didn't spend a ton of time and we'll get to the the this in chronological order at some point but switzerland is where we stopped over before we went from before we got to newark yeah and we had like an 11 hour layover, so we had to get a hotel. Um, and I don't know if it's just like the Swiss in general or the language barrier or whatever it was, but people were so much colder. Literally. So mean. And not mean, just very like direct. Okay. Here's a quick example. And abrupt. Michael went up to the woman who was running the taxi line and said, hey, we're staying at the Radisson, blah, blah, blah. Like normally in America, you're like, hey, I'm staying here. They'll say, okay, we'll get a cab for you, blah, blah. Michael said, hey, we're staying here. And she said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she was clearly directing where the cabs go. Yeah, it was just bizarre. But, but, okay, so we're stuck on the streets for, like, what, 30 minutes? It took a while to get through those streets. Like, your dad had to get out and make sure we weren't, like, crashing into 
buildings. It was really a group. It was a community effort because my dad got out of the car for a little bit. And then some of the locals were helping us navigate the streets because we didn't like know all the street signs and where you could turn left and where you couldn't or the fastest way out of the maze that we were in. It really felt like we were in a corn maze and I needed like little elves to pop out of the corn maze and direct us. You were very calm. Yeah. I mean, it was either that or drive into an old person's building. I just thought that we were actually going to get stuck and that we were going to have to be like beat somehow towed out that was definitely a worry of mine definitely a worry of mine yeah. uh thank you to marijuana and to josh from indy all both of them uh gifted five tier one subs so thank yeah. you guys very very much for that it's really cool um but the coolest thing that we did in malaga the, the coolest city <laughs> michael you're not gonna mention handsome handsome hans okay. oh yeah you can talk about so him. oh right when we got stuck the first part we got stuck we were like, I don't know if we're going to make it. Should we continue going down the street? And we're all like, yes, no, whatever. And I'm in the front passenger seat. My window is down. And this man who literally looked like Hans from Frozen, like this Prince Charming. He's he, probably the best looking guy I've ever seen in my ever. life. <laughs> and he had on like uh, his little uh, work outfit, which was like not just it was a suit without a jacket. Like he had on dress yeah, shirt, a, a pants, shirt and like, tie fit perfect. He had his little binder in his hand. And we're like looking around like, can we do it? Can we do it? And he literally pops his head in the car and goes. No, no, no. And we're like. <laughs> but he didn't. He, it was like condescending and charming at the same time because he was clearly laughing at our misfortune. Yes. Uh, but also helping us, telling us like, listen, you guys are not going to make it down this street. So don't even bother. And we all after he walked away, everyone in the everyone car was from- just shocked at how handsome this man <laughs> that popped his head into the van was. It was bizarre. Um, but OK, we went to a lot of different villages cities areas in malaga and out of all the places we went to the most memorable Should we say it on the count of three was a little place called called one two three the, the dick, dick town, town. <laughs> we went twice the dick town yeah we did go to dick town twice or the dick town specifically I not just posted, any old dick town i'm gonna post a reel of this because it's that amazing so this place the dick town is known for only two things both of them are erotic waffles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the dick, which is pictured here that you can buy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Carla Marie. <laughs> the pussy. <laughs> which, you can so, get ice cream. The, so basically, uh, the dick, when you order it, is a waffle shaped like a penis. And then he can fill it with different types of fillings. And then he covers it in another, like, I don't know, like a Nutella type of cream or different versions you of that. You have options. And then you get... Toppings just like you would ice cream. Carlos is the owner. He's awesome. And he literally like puts on a show Mm -hmm. as you are doing this. And his, so he obviously speaks Spanish, but his American accent or sorry, his like accent Mm -hmm. trying to speak American is what truly English, what? Uh, Whatever. Is what makes it. Cause I can hear, I won't be able to do it, but I can hear him in my head being like, so how do you want your dick? (laughs) He it made it better. He was like part of the show and he was just dirty enough yes. with a lot of his jokes that it was funny, but not like gross or no. over the top So and just pleasant. And I think when you say things in an accent and you're European, yes. it just makes everything more pleasant. And it was so good. Mm-hmm. So it's a great dick. Um, on the day that we played hooky, Anthony, Michael and myself stumbled upon like we literally all stopped in our tracks. and was like, does that say what I think it is? And there was some girl literally eating one standing there and she looked over at us and she literally has this. <laughs> dick waffle in her mouth looking at us and we're like okay we're getting one so the next day we took anthony's parents and his brother justin and his girlfriend rihanna back there and it was so fun yeah. all over again your dad loved it my parents definitely enjoyed it <laughs> my, my parents were sending pictures of the dicks to people <laughs> yeah. um it was fantastic and we did go there twice the other thing you can buy so the dick i explained how that and you saw the picture how that yeah. served um I hate saying this word. The pussy is... Uh, <laughs> uh, you have to say like him, is a pussy. <laughs> is served um, almost like a Belgian waffle that you can take with you. It's a waffle and ice cream and toppings. Right? Isn't a Belgian waffle a waffle yeah, with ice cream? Yeah, but it like folds. It looks yeah. like a little taco. <laughs> and yeah, and the waffle um, iron that he has literally molds it to look like those two things. Mm-hmm. I don't have a picture of Your not brother. the dick. Um, my Justin. brother Justin might have a picture of it. If he does, he can send it to me. It doesn't look as funny as the dick, just because dicks are funnier in general. But it, he, they did say it tasted really good. And he was described, uh, Carlos. It's almost like an ice cream taco. 
Carlos was describing it to us, and he was like, well, you can get the dick, which I can fill with some cream and blah, 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 or you can get the pussy <laughs> waffle, which word. you can have with ice cream, which it tastes way better, but your face is going to be a mess after you eat it. And we were like, <laughs> what? No, he was, he was great. <sighs> and then – um. But the trip itself was fantastic. And a lot of people, so because it was my family, Carla Marie came as well. The question that I was getting from a lot of people is like, oh, are you nervous for Carla Marie to be on a vacation with your family? And I think Who people forget. That? No, a lot of people were. Whether it was nervous or was it is it like a big deal? I knew Carla Marie's family and she knew mine yeah. now for what's probably close to like eight years mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. So all of that stuff isn't a big deal yeah. at all. Like that was just very. Like we, adult summer camp was with your brothers Mm -hmm. yeah and then i i had met carla marie's parents she had met mine at different occasions so all of that stuff is uh that's long gone yeah i mean none of that's really like a big deal there's not i know for a lot of people in relationships that might be a big deal but we had moved past that so long ago it didn't really matter but it was the most amount of time i've obviously spent with your family and i mean i think it went well Uh, i mean i think it did i don't know (laughs) no one's complained yet 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 uh, Lori, thank you very much for the subscription with Prime. Appreciate you very much. I also saw we had one from Carrie. Thank you very much as well. Because all those subs, primes, bits, they are subs, gifts, and bits all help a lot. Man, I am really struggling to like remember all of the lingo for Twitch. <laughs> Michael said that's a no for me, dog. I guess it didn't go well. No, Michael no, never liked you, though. So that's, that's different. So what I was going to say, and now maybe I shouldn't because Michael said mean things, but... I observed something about your brothers. Okay. Oh, I guess it's you too, obviously. But I've obviously known you forever. They are very compliment complimentative. Is that the word? Complimentary. I no. guess complimentary. No, no, they're not complimentary. <laughs> complimentary. <laughs> well, okay, what are you trying to say? They're like I've never in my life met guys that you aren't dating that are like, oh, that looks nice, or you look pretty today, or blow. And they were both doing that. Like, you guys would do it to your mom. They would say it to me, and I was like, what? Didn't even notice it. Like, your brother Justin was like, I really like that dress. You look pretty. I was like, thanks. And then I changed it because you told me I looked like a pilgrim. (laughs) And (laughs) so that defeats that conversation right there. And then Justin was like, I like the other dress better. I was like, I know, but Anthony told me I look like a pilgrim. So I never said you looked like a pilgrim. I walked out of the room, and he goes, hey, um, do you know how long it, it took to get from England to Massachusetts on the Mayflower? And I was like... Is this a trivia question? That And then I was like, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that happened. And then your brother Michael was like, those are really cool shorts. And I was like, thanks. They're a rental. And he was just like, you're so fucking weird. Yeah, no one cares that they're a rental. Uh, thank you very much to the first time chat. Chatter, I should say. How would you even say that? Jars Jeb is how I would Jars Jeb. pronounce that. I don't know. Yeah, the complimentary. I guess that's the word, court. But you guys do it to your mom as well. Mm-hmm. And like. I've never, ever in my life witnessed guys do that. I don't know. I, I don't really know what to say to that. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I guess. It was cool. Thanks for noticing. You're good dudes. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, thank you for gassing us up so that we can just let people down in the future. Appreciate that very much. Uh, you'll notice also <laughs> right now that Carla Marie and I are using different microphones. Carla Marie has our new microphones which are fantastic. I have our old microphone. Mm -hmm. And that is because I realized as I was setting everything up this morning at like five in the morning that I forgot all of the podcast equipment that I had taken to New Jersey. It's all still in New Jersey. So when my mom gets back to New Jersey, I have to have her ship a bunch of stuff over to me. But thankfully, this is why you have extra stuff. So it can always work. Doesn't matter. Uh, What else do we have here in the chat? Martha's right. She said props to their parents for raising them right. Yeah, but see, here's what's weird. So if we're raised right and we comp- – if we were quote-unquote raised right mm-hmm. um, and what you notice is us complimenting our mom, that our mom just raised us to compliment her <laughs> <laughs> in a very selfish turn of events. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's great. I mean, it works out for the rest of us. I guess so. I'm trying to clear the cup right now and it's not really like working out the way it's supposed to and that's kind of bothering me, but I need to get over that and uh, – oh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Did it- is there more photos? Uh, yeah, I do have one more photo, but it's not from Malaga, actually. Okay. It's a photo from what I did yesterday. So I actually got to go. And yesterday, oh. for uh, baseball fans out here, yesterday was a big day for the American League because you had four teams that all had a, a very possible 
a very real chance of getting to the playoffs and having this four team tie. It was the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Mariners and the Blue Jays. And I got to actually go last minute to the Mariners game. And that's the little mascot for the T-Birds. Why the, was he sitting in front of you? He just showed up one day, uh, or one <laughs> inning. One day was yesterday, one inning. Towards the end of the game, I guess all of the local sports teams had their mascots That's cool. at the Mariners game. Yeah, it would have been cool for the M's to win. It would have been, and what they did, which was really cool, was Kyle Seeger is the Aww. third baseman for the Mariners. He's been there for a long time. He's kind of like a, a cornerstone of that franchise and has been. His contract expires this season. The team is most likely not going to pick up their team option, which would cost them like $20 because they're trying to rebuild the team. And they had his son throw out the ceremonial first pitch, and like he got to five? catch it. Yeah, his son's a, a little kid. And it was really cool seeing that at the end of the game, once the uh, Red Sox and the Yankees both won their respective games, it kind of shut the door on the Mariners' postseason hopes. And once that happened... The manager took Seeger out so everyone could give him a standing ovation. It was really just a, a cool thing to be a part of. And I had never in my five years of being here in Seattle seen the ballpark that alive. Because cool. most of the games that have happened in the last 20 years here in Seattle have been pretty useless games. They have. There's been maybe three times where they had meaningful games at the end of the year. So to see a sold out crowd for three games in a row, cool. it was a really cool experience. Still glad the Yankees won their game. I was hoping for a Yankees win and a Mariners win coupled with a Red Sox loss and a Blue Jays loss because that would have made the Yankees have their game on Tuesday and then the Red Sox and the Blue Jays would have been playing today for that final spot to play the Yankees. Are you going to go to, if the Yankees are in the World Series, are you going to go to a game? It depends on where it is. If it's in New York, I mean, obviously they'll have home games in New York, but maybe if they're playing in Where's San Francisco the, uh, or LA, yeah, that's an easier game to make. I'm rooting for that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. I would love me a Yankees Red Sox World Series. That's impossible. Why? They can't play in the World Series because they play in the same division. But they used to. No, they play in the playoffs. They don't play in the World Series. When we were in eighth, when I was in eighth grade, that wasn't the World Series. No, that's stupid. It's impossible because oh, the, the Yankees World Mets. Yankees Mets can play. Subway. The series. Mets were terrible though, so they're they're useless. Also, like the Yankees will play the Red Sox tomorrow night in the wild card game, so that will be a very strenuous but exciting game it's stupid that teams can't play teams in the world series no they, they would play in the american league championship game or series yeah, court said she thought the same thing like in early high school no the yankees and the red sox cannot play i in remember the world series. on elvis's show uh there was a show in boston that was playing like parodies about the yankees and elvis was playing parodies about them and i remember listening and that and they is they had each other like our sister station. I was like, what do you mean sister station? What and that, that is very possible that they were doing that. It just wasn't for the World Series. It was probably for the American League Championship Series. That's where you win a pennant and then you go on to win. You go on to play for the World Series. I, I just don't know how else to explain that at this point. But it's point. not fair. Like they should get to play. Why? Each other. They don't have to though. That's like saying the the Giants and the Eagles should play each other in the Super Bowl. How that great is impossible. Would that, be? that would be awesome. The the furthest they can go is playing each other in the uh, NFC cool Championship. It, but how cool would it be if they could? It wouldn't. It wouldn't really be any different. Once the stakes are that it's high, the they're all the same. It's for the ship. I don't I don't know what else where else to go with this cuz you're just refusing to believe. No, I believe. I'm just saying in a world how, where you could <laughs> in, in a world. A, how cool would it be? It, I mean, I guess it would be cool. It's stupid all these separate things. Why can't it just be whoever's the best? But that's the whole point. Is you split it in half, you take the best from each half and then they play each other. <laughs> Girls in sports, am I right? Yeah. Am I right? Uh -huh. There we go. Sports with a Z. Oh, Nick Wax just subscribed, and he's at 13 months Damn. of subscriptions. That's really cool. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, let's see. Um, I emailed you another photo. When? Like, during the show, because you were supposed to put it up. So All right, well, I will get that. You've got to talk, though. About what? I don't know. Just kidding. Um, there are a few things we need to talk about. One of them being something cool that we haven't got to tell you guys about in a whole year. <laughs> And it's basically something that we've been like keeping, not a secret, but it's been under wraps. So when we were in Jamaica last year, we actually got to be the very first people 
to record and explore this new things that Sandals was doing. And it's called the Sandals Palmcast. It's a podcast. And we recorded a ton of episodes while we were there. And it literally just launched today. And the first, I think it's three episodes are out. And they are all with Sandals CEO, Adam Stewart. We got to go to his house, have dinner at his house, which is probably the best dinner I've ever had in my it life. It was, yeah. Amazing. I, it's funny because... The food at Sandals is legitimately like world class. Yeah, it's so good. And I still, Anthony, I still miss going to Adam's house, <laughs> Adam you, Stewart. And we had butternut squash soup. And I remember Anthony was like, I've never had this before. What is this? I'm like, stop embarrassing me. Like you've had butternut squash I, soup No, before. never. Not once in my life had I had, had I had butternut squa- squash soup. Are you okay? No, I'm not. So it's finally. It's early. I'm still trying to make it like. <clears throat> I'm going to send the Jet link lag in is here. kicking in. You can save it for later. Oh, because we said podcast. Now Stream Elements is putting Monday, Friday. When well, that happens? I think so. No, it's a timed thing. It just happens whenever. No, when sometimes when we say the word podcast, it goes. Podcast. No, it's not going to do it. No. <laughs> Allison Beagle said newest EMH was born this AM. Like, oh, my God. Your child? I, I hope so. And you're watching from the hospital? Well, congratulations if it is your child. Um, Martha said, I need a sandals trip in my future. Same. You absolutely do. And Allison, congratulations. Tell us the name and... I guess it is their birthday. It's a birthday. It's a baby. There we go. That's so exciting. That is really, really cool. Okay, so I put the link in there. Lucas is five hours old. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's okay. But Lucas is born. Oh, he's he five hours the same old. Same birthday as your brother. There we go. Just another one on October 4th. Oh, has he pooped yet? I'm curious. <laughs> Not your brother, Lucas. <laughs> My brother probably has. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's. You, you want me to oh. put this picture up for you? Yes. So yesterday we get a text from my niece whose eyeball is in the bottom of that photo, uh, Alyssa Marie, and she's like, hey, I'm at the bar and I'm with Life is a Hike from Twitter. And I was like, Larry? And she went to the bar and she is the first person to report to us that they have seen someone wearing a You Look Great shirt in public that was a surprise, right? Like, mm-hmm. they didn't show up somewhere where they knew someone was going to be wearing it. She's the first person to tell me about it. And I was like, oh, my God. And she was like, I feel so cool that I found someone. And then I was talking. She's like, you know his name? And I was like, yeah. I mean, we try our best to remember everyone's names. It's hard because we see 300 different usernames every day. But we do our best to remember. And she was like. Oh, life is a hike. Is in the chat. She's like, this is, it's so cool. And she, she I guess, was hanging out with him and talking to him a bit. Um. But yeah, that was fun. I think they were at One Republic in Hoboken. I don't know where she was. She said One Republic. I thought that place closed in Hoboken. I thought There's they were shut down. There's one in North Arlington too. I think. Okay. So I don't know where. So maybe the, I'm sure Larry will let us know. Life is a hike. He said, "Sorry, I was a little tipsy." That is all good. As you should be. I mean, wearing that stupid Rutgers colored one. It was probably a tough weekend, you know, mm. for anyone who supports that team. My mom only wears her "You Look Great" stuff anywhere now. That's good. Yeah. I like that. She went to dinner at my sister's last night with um, her, my sister's in-laws. And I, my sister sent a picture and my mom was in her eulogy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was in North Arlington, my hometown. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. There's a One Republic there. <clears throat> yeah, because they were kicked out of Hoboken from what I remember. Why? They were one of the bars. Because remember a couple of years ago, Hoboken cracked down on all of their bars. And I think they one- may have lost their liquor license or something like that yeah. because it was just out of control. Hoboken has gone through some tough times mm. <laughs> and by tough times, just drunk idiots who don't know how to act. Yeah, that's really it. Uh, we are selling more merch uh, either very end of this month or early November. We get our samples in the mail today, I believe. Martha said she tries to wear her uh, You Look Great stuff everywhere as well. I mean, same. I also saw Realtor Jen was on a flight back to she was going to the New York area and she was wearing her neon nice. yellow. That is a bright one for a plane. So I wore my blue You Look Great yesterday to the Mariners game. I thought about wearing the bright yellow, but I was also like, well, I'm not going to wear Mariners stuff because I'm clearly cheering for the Yankees. I was listening to the game in my headphones as I was at the game. Mm-hmm. So I'll try to at least wear Mariners colors if I'm not going to wear their logo. And I had a blue hoodie and a green face mask. Okay. So I felt like that was me supporting the Mariners as much as I could really support them. What, Carthamer? Fueled by Dana. What? 
I wore my yellow gray shirt to the Jonas Brothers show in Connecticut last week, and Joe put us on the Jumbotron, but I have no proof this happened. I oh, don't need no. proof. That's okay. That is really cool. But I bet if you would have said, hey, Joe, this is um, from Carla Marie and Anthony from Elvis Duran in the Morning Show, even though that's not where we are right now, he would know. He would know Elvis Duran in the Morning Show. No, he would know us. I, Maybe. <laughs> he took selfies on my phone. He wanted to date That's me. true. He wanted to date me, but now he's with... What's her name from Game of Thrones? Um, Fred the Millman said that his daughter practice, practically is living in her You Look Great gear now. And he did post a picture with her, which was fantastic. She has the yeah. gray one mm -hmm. with You Look Great written on it. They are comfortable hoodies. They are. And I think we will be bringing back, if you haven't purchased a hoodie yet, we'll be bringing back some of the colors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll do the full spectrum of colors that we may have had available originally. We'll see what happens. Liz said, any possibility of there being any... Bright non-cotton tank top. So like Under Armour kind of material you're thinking? We'll probably do that more towards like our next launch, we'll, yeah. which will most likely be towards the summer. So we'll figure that out. Be Chantilly, where you been? They've been here the whole time. No, I haven't seen that username in a long time. It, was, it came in earlier. No, like days. Oh, well, we've been on vacation. Uh, Don't worry, we'll get some new merch. Um, And thank you to everyone. So this is one of the interesting things about working for yourself. And anyone who has their own business can understand this. Um, when you take a vacation, obviously you're not working. And when you don't work for a corporation that gives you paid time off or anything, taking a vacation can actually be like a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know, A, who's going to be there when you get back. You're not going to be making money while you're gone. So it's a little bit more of a sacrifice when you don't have like paid vacation yeah. and things like that. So to everyone who subscribed before we went on vacation and who's subscribing now... Thank you, A, for just being here for us, and uh, B, for letting us know that we can take vacations yeah. and still make this thing work, um, because it is something that we think about all the time. Like, how do we make sure that we're putting all of our energy into building this and whatever this becomes, but also making sure that we're enjoying life and doing the things mm -hmm. that we're supposed to do? So doing things like buying a boozy bingo packet also help us as well. Because those are projects that we we partner with with people to hopefully build our brand and work on things down the road. Yeah, it's like agreed completely. Because we didn't so do a, we didn't do a podcast, we didn't do any shows, and it was okay. And everyone made it. You know, everyone's alive now. Yeah. Well, unless you're not here because you died. Okay. I don't know. It's possible. Jay Perez wants us to do some stationery. You look great. Like letterhead, like envelopes. <laughs> no. Like notebooks or notepads. Oh, that counts as stationary? I always thought stationary was like stuff you had for like writing letters. I don't know. Um, like a themed envelope. I don't know. Jay Perez said, I can't wait to have a drink while trying to play bingo. I believe Seattle Cocktail Club is going to put together at least one recipe of a drink you can make at home. If they aren't, they are now. No, that was the plan. I know. I don't I'm remember. 99% sure of. Wow. Nick has to go to an in-person class. Let's see. Awesome. Draw strange. So this is a bunch of, if you guys have suggestions and we've opened this up before, feel free to email us. Um, what's our new email, Carla Marie? Hello at Carla Marie and Anthony .com. So you can use that. That is our newest email. We're trying to be like a little more uh, buttoned up and corporate about things and have our own website and <laughs> no. things like that. Not corporate, but like, I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Official? Professional. Professional? Yeah. Yeah. So we're working on that. Um, October 12th, by the way, is the cutoff date for your chance to uh, buy the Boozy Bingo packet. So you're going to want to do that as soon as possible because, as we all know, if you're anything like me, you procrastinate. And then by the time you actually get around to doing what you thought you wanted to do, mm -hmm. it's too late. So do it now. You've got nine days to make sure that you buy the packet for Boozy Bingo. But you want to make sure you do that. Okay. Can we something packet? Someone said packet in the – It's like college. Why? Packets – I think packet's a good – because it's not it. a packet that gets sent. It's a kit. Is it packaged? What? Is it packaged in a small little envelope? Then it's a packet. Speaking of, we got these things in the mail. I'll show it off tomorrow. We each got one. And it's... What is it? A French little... Ma a little... A French magazine. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Who sent it? I have no idea. So we're going to... I'll show it tomorrow. Um... CMG said, I'm curious how you guys found the COVID protocols in Europe. I'm hoping to visit home soon and curious how you found the experience. Um, I would say they are way more buttoned up in regards to masks than here. 
Um, well, I guess the well, same. Well, it depends. It, where if you're, here is. Here is, if here is Seattle, we it's have masks on everywhere. So it's very similar. So if you're in the Seattle area or any other state or municipality in general that has a mask mandate, it's very similar. Um, what you will want to remember is a lot of European countries have closed down travel from America if you are not vaccinated. So luckily, everyone in our trip was vaccinated. So we didn't have that many issues. Um, going there, all we had to do is prove our vaccination. You have to fill out like some online forms and you get like a QR code that yeah. like basically proves that you are vaccinated even though or. No, and then they'll check when you're yeah, yeah, actually yeah, um, when you're checking in for your flight on the way back. However, coming back to America, whether you're vaccinated or not, you had to prove a negative test before you got on your plane. And. It was pretty simple. There are, at least in Spain, there were a bunch of options of places you can go get a rapid test. They email you the verification. It's called a, the place we went is called a dem, Democrat test. Do you notice that? Yeah. I is think that, it's just like a government testing facility. I think it means like, here's stupid Americans, come here and get your test. I don't think that's what it uh -huh. means. <laughs> Democracy is a thing like <laughs> all over the world no. now. Um, but, <laughs> but it was... Pretty simple. It took 15 minutes. We got our test, signed up. Uh, after we found the place. Yeah. Um, and then we had the QR code, went to the airport, and they, everything was fine. So that's about it, really. And then a lot of the customs forms were able to f be filled out online. So that was super simple. Mm -hmm. So in regards to traveling, if you're vaccinated, super simple. Yeah. And their protocols, again, everything was open. You just have to wear a mask indoors. You just have to be ready to wear a mask on an airplane for seven days. That That's was what it feels like that was tough. So flying back, it's just between getting to the airport early, being on the plane, then like there is basically other than if you went to the bathroom and took off your mask, your mask was on for like twenty hours. Mm -hmm. It was a long time to have a mask on. So you have to make sure you find a comfortable mask that you can wear for a while. I would suggest oh. one of the ones that actually goes around the back of your head. That way, it's not on your ears the whole time because you, you have for that. Women. And if you have, like, headphones in, there's just a lot of pressure on your yeah. ears, and it can actually become a little painful. It was painful. Um, we got to find they – everyone in Spain was wearing those mask extenders that went around the back of their head. They are pretty cool. But life is like, it does not need to be a PCR test. And I'm going to get this link from my sister. When she went on her honeymoon, she didn't actually go get tested somewhere. She went with, like, a pre-bought test. It's called Na Nava something. And – you don't open the box until you – so there's an app you download, and you basically do a FaceTime through this app to a doctor. And then the doctor says, okay, open your thing, and you open it, and you swab yourself, and the doctor approves your test. You never have to leave your hotel room. So I'll find out from her. Um, it's more expensive. It's like a chaperone self-test. Basically. It's, I think it was like 150 bucks a test. But if you're concerned with traveling and finding a place nearby or whatever it may be, it won't hurt to travel. How much was our test in Spain? 25 bucks. Oh, it's not bad at all. Well, 25, 25 euros. euros. Uh, let's see. Oh, Carla Marie, did you finally hit your points yeah. on Alaska Airlines? Hopefully you got your red carpet welcome. Uh, so I talked about this. Uh, apparently, um, you only get the red carpet welcome when you're tier three. Oh, God. What are you, poor? I know. Disgusting. You peasant. So I'm the middle. <laughs> I'm the middle one. Uh, Nick Wax in the chat on Twitch said the six hour flight from Seattle to Honolulu was pretty decent. Thank God we didn't have some effing anti-mask a-holes on the flight. I'll tell you what I did have on the flight yesterday. The, okay, on the <laughs> way to New Jersey, I said that I had someone sucking on an avocado. Okay? That was nothing. I would listen to that man suck an avocado the whole flight compared to what I had to deal with yesterday. Yesterday was super interesting. Uh, mainly because when you get on a flight that leaves, that departs, keep in mind, departs at 7 o'clock in the morning. Usually everyone gets on that plane, falls up. asleep, and it's miserable because they woke up at like five to get to the airport. So to paint this picture, I was in row 11 window. Then there's a row behind me. And then Anthony was row 13. 13 F. Window. So we were in line with each other. There was a row in between us. This woman sits behind me. She's got like her two or three year old son. And just starts going, Mom, what's it? Mom? And the mom was behind you? Yeah, the mom, the grandmother, the matriarch of the family, uh, was behind me. And originally, she was sitting in the same row as no, her you guys, husband. You don't even know. And the first glimpse of how terrible this family as a whole. Keep in mind, Carla Marie said there was a two or three year old that was on the plane. That was the best family member on the plane. 
And yeah, it you. acted like a kid. It kicked the chair a little bit. No, it no. cried. But it was a baby. Okay. It was a baby. Yes. Now the, kid, <laughs> the mother yes. let the kid sit on her lap and just <laughs> for two hours to my seat, mm-hmm. kicking it. And I was just like, and she kept every But few that's not in, the kid's fault. Every few minutes she'd be like, Tanner, don't do that. The people are napping. And I was like, I don't want to <laughs> turn around and be like, like, what am I going to do? And then he was taking the window, slamming it up and down. It was awful. And then she decided to read him books. Um, Red Llama Pajama, if you're a parent and you know this book, I heard it at this volume yeah. on the airplane. That was the biggest problem with this whole family is that they had no sort of inside or airplane etiquette voice. Except for the grandpa. He was normal. He was actually the best one, then the kid. But let me explain my first experience with this family. So I sit down, 13F. This woman is in 14F. And all of a sudden, I start hearing the sounds of a video game. And she's clearly playing her iPad. The grandma. The grandma is playing her iPad behind me, playing some game on there. And the grandpa looks over at her because there's a seat between them. He looks over. He said, hey, I think uh, you should plug your headphones in because everyone can hear that. And without missing a beat, this woman says, I don't think it works with the headphones that we were supposed to get, you douche. And right away, I'm like, oh, this is not going to be good. If that's this woman's attitude at 7 o'clock in the morning, calling her husband a douche at a volume that the entire plane could hear. I didn't hear this, but yeah. It was going to be a bad flight. And I guess they were like the, so the dad, grandpa, was next to her, but apparently wasn't supposed to be. And someone came on and was like, hey, that's my seat. And the grandma started yelling at the passenger. It was like, like. Show me your paperwork. Yeah. And he's like, here. And she's like, and then the daughter behind me is like, mom, is that for the next flight or for this flight? Like screaming, screaming. So the and the woman, I, I'm going to cut you off for a second. Not only was the woman loud, she was just a rude person. Was, the way were, she addressed Karen. everybody. Karen. The way she addressed everybody from the flight oh, attendants okay. to her family, to her husband, to whoever, the way she addressed everybody was rude. And she was, hands down, the worst person I've been on a flight with. So, the grandpa ends up moving his seat to being in the row behind me. And, which made all three of them and the mom have conversations a row over Anthony. And there was a son a couple rows back that they were having a conversation with as well in the middle of the flight. So, I guess the the dad grandpa says to his daughter, Hey, we should wait for everyone to get off the plane when we land. Like, we're still in the air, and I hear this happening. Because we've got luggage, like, far back, and this way we can all get off together with the kid. It's going to be a mess. And she goes, Dad, no. I'm not doing that. My ankle is swollen. I had to unlace my shoe in the middle of the flight. It hurts too much. And he's like, okay, so, like, it's all right. And she's like, no, Dad. I am not sitting here waiting for everyone to get off this plane. And screaming. And I'm like, this poor man. Oh, he just, I mean... He was basically verbally assaulted by his daughter and his wife the entire flight. Like, I wanted to turn around to him and be like, you should not be treated like that. I don't know what you did. Maybe you did. Maybe you <laughs> cheated on your wife. I don't know. Why is everyone treating you like this? It is. And like Lisa said in the chat, like mother, like daughter. I've, I've never guarantee- seen such disrespect but in my life. I guarantee you at some point in her life, the daughter thought it was okay to speak to the dad because that's how she heard her mom yep. speak to her dad. Mm-hmm. And... This is where I do get, and this is a a bigger thing, I do get very annoyed when I hear couples arguing in public and then especially in front of their kids in public. Mm -hmm. Because I think that does set the precedent down the road where that's okay all the time. And listen, there are arguments that you're going to have. There are going to be little things, big and small, that you disagree about. But I think when you, there are times you have to, not have to, but you're going to yell at each other at some point in a relationship. That stuff should always be at home or behind closed doors or alone. Not the whole world doesn't need to be a part of that argument. But man, this guy, every time he said something, it wasn't even like these were conversations that were going back and forth. It's not like he said, oh, we should wait. And the daughter politely said no. And then he pushed that agenda the whole time. (laughs) He would just make casual observations or suggestions and just right away get socked in the face with attitude. It was insane. I just, I've never seen it, seen or heard anything like that. I only saw the back of her head too because I really wanted to know what she looked like. 
She looked like a regular lady. I don't really know how to. The kid was adorable. My Did you see the, the baby? I saw him. Adorable. When he woke up and his hair was all over the place because he finally fell asleep. But I was telling my family, my mom, my mom was like, you should have like rang for the flight attendant. I was like, yeah. And I rang for the flight attendant and I had to be like, hey, the kid behind me is kicking. Like the, at that point, I can just turn around and tell them. Yeah, because I guess they would hear you. Yeah. Telling the person. I so bad when the flight attendant, I, I was trying to like look at them and be like, help me. Yeah. If you're in the San Jose area, because that's where they were flying to, because oh. the whole flight knew where they were going at the end of their, <laughs> their journey. If you're in the San Jose area and you see this family, please just help the grandpa out. Prayers for the grandfather. <laughs> Prayers like for Gramps. Zero volume control. Yeah. And I get it. I get it. Sometimes if you're traveling with a big family, you've got to have different. Not this. So conversations across aisles. But it was just, it was something else. And the, the grandma, the worst part was anytime she had a thought, she verbalized it. Like just Two stupid rows, things. Two, stupid things. Like, I don't know, let's say the little kid's name is Josh. Is Josh Tanner. eating his food? It was Tanner. Tanner. Is Tanner eating? Let me know if Tanner's eating. You're like, shut up. Who cares? I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, it was bad. Hashtag prayers for Gramps. You should be able to send anonymous messages to the flight attendant, but I'm sure that would turn into security issues. Well, it would just turn into, like, people doing stupid things, too. Yeah. Like, oh, the person next to me smells. Send. Which has happened to me before, and that sucks. Oh, no. For the mailman, I don't think they were Californians. I think they were visiting California. I think, unfortunately, and we have to own this, I think they were actually from New Jersey. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they were. Probably South Jersey, if I'm being totally honest. They sounded more they South Jersey. I didn't hear any Jersey accent. When we were going through security uh, in Spain, so the, first of all, when you're traveling in Europe, like they don't check your ID when you're getting on a plane. Well, they don't check your ID until you're actually getting on the plane. They don't check it. I guess they checked it when we checked our bags, but going through security, I could have sent anyone else through that line. Well, you got to remember, though, when we were traveling into and out of Spain, we were coming to and from countries in the EU. When we were leaving Spain. Yeah. And we went through security. The woman who took my ticket did not look at my ID. Oh. And I was like, oh, this is great. And there was a man who had to get go back through security three times. And your brother and I were stuck in this line. And we were both like, this, if this was New Jersey, that man would be just getting screamed He'd at. He'd be booed by screamed the whole at. place. <laughs> and when we were coming back here, something happened in security yesterday. Oh, um yesterday oh my god so yesterday morning yeah in nork airport we're waiting security line we have tsa pre-check and you have to take your electronics out of the bag which sounds so pretentious but why am i paying for pre-check sure. if i still have to do all of the things yeah. and i'm like whatever i'm not gonna like what am i gonna say like there's nothing i can do i'm not gonna fight the tsa agent what are we in steerage yeah. like peasants and then you hear everyone in the line start like everyone starts like grumbling the same thing and all of a sudden everyone's like yeah what am i paying for what is this and i'm like oh it's so good to be home. there was almost a revolt <laughs> yeah. there really was i will say as we were traveling um from brussels which was our first stop to spain yes because we were just doing a transfer in the airport there wasn't a lot that we had to do no they we had to go through passport yeah they, but that was like two seconds they no, checked they it and, check your passport, and then we had to show our passport again getting on the plane yes um but on the way back when we were in zurich in Switzerland, coming back to America, they checked our passport three. and our QR codes and everything like three times within a five minute span. And I don't mind. I, I mean, I have it. I have it out. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It was just real, real weird where to see how thoroughly we were checked going to America as opposed to all the other places mm -hmm. we traveled to. And unfortunately, um, if anyone is curious, we didn't get to spend a ton of time in Brussels. Didn't really leave the didn't leave the airport. We got at all. a waffle in Brussels. And, not a dick. Um, not a dick. And in Zurich, when we left our layover, even though it was like 11 hours or 10 hours or we something like that, PM. got there late. Every, we weren't staying in Zurich, like the city proper. We were staying right outside. So everything was closed by us. But there was a McDonald's that was attached to our hotel. And oh, we, we weren't allowed to eat inside McDonald's because we didn't get a we never vaccine cards. No, no, no. Which you I, didn't, it wasn't even a vaccine card. You needed to have your. Um, vaccine card validated yeah. by the government, which we didn't do. So we had to sit outside McDonald's and eat yeah. in the cold. Um, but we, the room we had had two twin beds. It was it was a tiny, tiny room. I think tiny. Europeans are just smaller in general. Everything was small. Two twin beds, three people. Yeah. Okay. 
So Anthony's brother got one, and the beds were less than a foot apart. Mm -hmm. And then Anthony and I shared a twin bed. And this man had the audacity in the middle of the night to wake up and go to me, can you just give me some space? I needed some space. I was being, I was being, uh, I don't know, my my space was being taken over. I actually laughed because I was like, I know he's like half asleep. I don't know that he realizes that I can't give him space. I'm going to, okay, let me explain where my my thought process was in that. Like I didn't I was sweating. I didn't want to be on top of you. I was very tired. <laughs> there was a lot of travel. It was the end of the vacation. And keep in mind, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Keep in mind. I was dead asleep and all of a sudden I hear Carla Marie on a FaceTime call with our friend Colleen because Colleen was oh, yeah. FaceTiming Carla Marie to let her watch all of the festivities for our friend Sam getting engaged on Friday night. Mhm. So in my mind, I'm so tired. I wake up to that noise, Carla Marie's alarm, and then the, the ringtone, all of that. And that's like happening in the bathroom. And all I want to do is sleep. And I just hear like, rah, 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 all these girl voices, with their stupid girl excitement. And I did not sleep this night. And then Carla Marie gets back into bed and I'm still trying to go to sleep. And now she's cramping my space. And I'm like so angry. And I was like, just leave me alone. Stop touching me. <laughs> and I was like, I can't not touch you. So that's where my head also, was. At one point, I was doing something on my hand, and I was like counting something, like doing this on my fingers. I forget what. I, oh, amount of people for something that I have to do this week. And I was like, this, this. in bed. What? What? You, where did this happen? Yeah, as okay. I was like trying to sleep because I couldn't sleep, and I think it was touching your leg, and you go, you're tickling. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it was torture. And I, but I think, imagine you're you're. At the end of a vacation, yeah, it was you're, stay, like, you're staying in a tiny bed. Your brother's snoring right next okay, to you. Okay, and then the two of them start, like, <laughs> each have their own instrument. And one's like, and Anthony's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Michael's like, <laughs> and then Anthony's like, <laughs> I, and I would hit yeah. him, and well, then he missed, would hit Michael. It was torture. You missed the third part of our band. Justin wasn't in the room, yeah. so we couldn't all snore in unison as, as uh, brothers. But imagine you're at the end of your vacation. It was, yeah. You got this tiny-ass European-style bed. And I can only call it European because they're just much smaller than Americans. Michael snoring to the left of me. Carla Marie's going, wee, wee, girl excitement on the phone. I'm hearing Colleen. I heard a little bit of Sam. Like, I heard noise. The air conditioning wasn't really working. It, yeah, it's, it's a little warmer than I had liked. <laughs> That's why I was in such a bad mood but like, <laughs> at the end. I will never forget. Like He somehow rolls over and almost knocks me off the bed. And he goes, yeah. can you just give me some space? <laughs> The hand movement. I thought about going and sleeping on the uh, the little like chair. I told I thought the you were cushioned gonna, chair. I if you noticed when I was in bed and you were sitting there, I was like, "Are you going to sleep yeah. there?" And you were like, "No." I was like, "Fuck." But I also <laughs> knew that I was going to be sleeping in a chair for the next nine hours, basically. Yeah, true. Um, and I will say this: <laughs> so as we we traveled um, on our transatlantic flights, we were in not economy. We we're in like economy plus. A hundred percent worth of the investment mm -hmm. that I didn't make. My parents bought the whole trip, <laughs> but a hundred percent worth that investment. Um, because you get like a blanket, a sleeping mask, a little purse. A, yeah. A little, <laughs> I, yeah, I actually have, there's nothing in it, but they give you like this little care kit. Socks. That's at your seat. Brush. Yeah. It's socks with traction. So you can walk around and not slip. Two I guess. meals um, that, that I was like, I'm so sleepy, but I just going to eat. But the chairs like reclined a little more. You had a little more leg room. Well, let me tell you what. Hot take. Flights actually suck more for short people than tall people because your feet don't reach the floor and it hurts your back. I don't think so anyone agrees with that. this little thing was great. I don't think anyone agrees with that. Yes. This was different than first class. Um, we oh, were, not first class. There were there, We were second class. We were third class because there's first class, then there's business, and then there was where we were. No. There was... No. No? No. I thought there were... Stop. Maybe on the, the first flight. No. There's Polaris whatever in front of us. And then we were That's what? The, the Nooks. Okay. And then we were Premium Plus. Okay. Now, Lisa says in the chat. In court. Airplane seats are definitely not made for short people. I don't think they're made for any people. Because, and then the, this thing? What is that called? The wings? No. What? Yeah, it's like the pillow wings. They're okay. called wings okay. that fold when in. you're talking about an airplane, you oh. literally cannot call the <laughs> things on the seat wings. Because that's wings. Okay. This is the headrest. is up here on me. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. Like, why doesn't it? There's one airplane I was on. It slid down. But even then, I don't think it reached. But if I sit all the way back, my feet dangle. You can't sleep like that. Is there anyone in the chat who's 5'8"? I know it's a weird question. I bet that's perfect. If you're 5'8", 
I want to know how you fly because I feel like that's five seven five eight seems to be five nine. Like maybe. your legs aren't long enough to like because I'll I'll say I'm five eleven and my knees are up against the chair in front of me usually if I'm sitting properly, right? And if you're five three, Carla Marie, mm-hmm. what are you five, five two? two five two? And you're laying your legs are hanging and not touching the ground. Maybe maybe there's a middle ground between five six and five eight that like just fits. And that's what they model. Maybe it's just every every plane is modeled what, after a European man. What if there's like a six foot four pilot? He ain't fitting in there. She ain't fitting in the cockpit. I think there's probably more room in the cockpit. I, I mean, our our friend Justin, our old oh, coworker, yeah. is like, like seven two, yeah. and he's a pilot, and he flies baby planes right now. Which I did yesterday. Tweet: I've never had a female pilot, and I've flown hundreds of times. No, you haven't. Pretty sure I have. You've heard a female get on the plane on the well, plane, and you've seen a female pilot when you're walking off i think so never i don't believe it okay court works in aviation and she's like the only female in her entire place okay well maybe that's uh and someone ha- has the balls to tweet me and go maybe females don't want to be pilots i was like that's a dumb response i mean it is but i also don't think they're like are people trying to keep female i don't think there's like a big movement to keep female pilots out maybe there's just more men that apply maybe it's just something that because we've seen men as pilots mm-hmm. Maybe we don't have the uh, what was what's the word I'm looking for? The motivation or the that's not the word I'm looking for. Inspiration. Yeah. For like little girls to want to grow up and be pilots. Maybe we just need to see more, and then we'll end up well, because, with like a, a well, female explosion in the cockpit. That sounded <laughs> real weird. Because the Barbie said it. Barbie I had growing up was a flight attendant. Was there no, there was no pilot Barbie? I bet not. Is there an American dream girl pilot? What? No, what is it? American, what American girls? What are those things? <laughs> American girl doll? Yeah. American yeah. dream girl sounds <laughs> like a blow up doll. I've, I've never had one. So yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Man, I wish I went into aviation. Wait, there's an outreach program for what Anthony is saying, says Court in the chat, trying to get young girls interested in aviation. That is really cool. I'll just do it. You'll do what? I'll go into aviation and then I'll. As a pilot? Yeah. Okay. It flies itself. (laughs) Yeah. You just got to know what all the buttons do. Okay. What does this button do, Carla Marie? Uh, That is a ding or the timer. What does that button do? That's a My Day Friday intro. Nothing. No, wait. We're going to get fired again. (laughs) What? That's the Tarantella. We can't play that. We got banned <laughs> from YouTube for doing it. So you don't even know. We have eight buttons. And you well, got. You didn't even know what that one was. No, I didn't. But I'm not claiming to be a pilot and just needing to know what the buttons do. I did a flight lesson once. Uh, let's see. Court says, Carla Marie, let's get you down here for a flight lesson. I'll do it. Oh, your brother just sent us a picture of um, a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. where, where did he send that to? A waffle one. Do you want me to email it to you? Yes, please. All right, we will. This will be the last thing we do. We're over our. Oh, this looks good. Our. (laughs) That's a good looking. Oh, we also found out that the word papaya, (laughs) um, if you're Cuban, I think specifically, is slang for the vagine, but like a a dirty slang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like an old school Cuban person would not want you to refer. It's like saying fanny in England. Very similar. It's Um, like saying pussy. So we've been saying we've been saying papaya. Instead of the the other P word, just because that word is so strong. The P U word is is so strong. It's almost like I feel like why why is penis okay? But I don't know. And I I don't we're gonna start saying it more. No, we're not. And we're not gonna say vagine, we're gonna say vagina. Again, I don't know why. I didn't make the rules. I'm just playing with the set of rules I've been given, the instructions in life that I've been given. And I feel like the P word for a okay. female. I will say is a similar saying the C word for a guy. Yeah, it's just like aggressive. It's yeah. like, oh, you're really letting so, me know. <laughs> so then if penis and, and dick are acceptable for yes. men, what do I get? Vagine. Vagina and. Vagine. No. I don't know. What like what did <laughs> what did you call it growing up? Like what was like a, the cute word for it? Pishy. That has to just be a Marie family thing. No, because everyone does. Pishy? Yeah. What the hell is a pishy? Which, there's this whole thing about how when you're raising kids, you have to stop giving their 
private parts cute names because it like when they grow up it's like fucking weird that they're calling things they're pishy and it's like they're supposed to know that these are grown up parts yeah i think using the scientific word for them like if we just grew up saying <laughs> cookie yep if we Erica. just grew up saying vagina like that would be fine but we didn't we right like our generation like, didn't but they should penis and vagina yes and that's fine but the p-u-s-s word it's just such a strong like I don't know. I feel like when women say it, it's not as bad. When a guy says it, it feels like real aggressive, like way too aggressive. I maybe I'm, and I could be on an island. I could be on Anthony Island here. Well, I don't I know. Took I tried icing Anthony and his brother Michael. <laughs> yeah. Michael got iced and he drank it. Anthony's like, I'm not doing it. Nah, nah, nah. No, 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 no. That is not how that happened. That is not how that happened at all. Carla Marie. I handed you a bag. Carla Marie walks in to this condo we were staying at. She had just gone outside, comes back in with, and I've known Carla Marie now for 11 years. Okay. She comes in. She goes, oh, I got you guys surprises. <laughs> My porky bitch. She, she was like a cracked out Lucky Charms character. Oh, I got you guys surprises. And I said, mm mm <laughs> This is not happening. I'm, and, <laughs> and I heard my brother open it and go, ah, shit. <laughs> so Carla Marie, I was taking a nap and Carla Marie walks in with that same shit eating grin on her face <laughs> and goes, Anthony, I got you a surprise. It's in the bag. Just open it up. And I said, absolutely not. You're not icing me. I know how this game works. So the reason so I, I did not, for the record, get iced and then refuse to do it. I broke the system. No. I broke the wheel. Stop. You're no fun. So then I got <laughs> Justin. But I was taking a video of Michael drinking his Smirnoff ice. And I go to Anthony. I'm like, you're such a pussy. And I was like, oh, my God. If like I post really, this video, really strong word. If I post this video, someone's going to come at me and be like, you can't say that. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I know. I can't say it. But I did. That's but true. Did you not post it? No, not yet. I don't know. I was like not posting things last week. That's true. Michael, I iced him and then he opened a bottle of wine for me. He's a nice kid. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not playing along. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Why? See, again, that, <laughs> like, that tone, I know what's going to happen. All right, so now I'm pulling up the picture for everyone's uh, information. I am pulling up the picture. And the best part was when your parents came back and I got Justin. They were like, what is happening? Why are you on your knee chunking this drink? This is an... We're not in order anymore, but we talked about going to Dicktown, the Dicktown, which was a place that sold exotic waffles, erotic, not exotic, <laughs> erotic waffles, waffles from all over shaped the like penises and vajayjays. And we showed you the picture. You can scroll back if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, we showed you the picture of the peen. And now penis. Here's what the vajayjay looks like. Clearly. If you look at Not the menu, graphic. though, you order dicks or pussies. Yes. <laughs> but, like, without the ice cream on it, it literally, like, you can see the vulva. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's it's molded to look like it. Like a beautiful flower uh. or something. I don't know. Oh, wait. We what? have more vagina talk, but we'll do it tomorrow. Why? Why do we have it? You know what it is. Think about it. From the trip. Uh. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. But we've we've gone over our limit, so we'll have to save that for tomorrow. Our time limit or vagina limit? Both. <laughs> but we, we've been past the vagina limit like 20 minutes ago. <sighs> like we're going to get flagged on YouTube. <laughs> we're 100% getting flagged on YouTube. <laughs> oh, man. What else do we have here in the chat before we go? If you trick oh. someone into unknowingly seeing a Smirnoff ice. Oh, Michael's explaining what icing someone is. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. So they have to kneel and chug. Um, and to my brother, Michael, who is in the chat oh. today. Big event. I haven't announced. 64. One more time. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hey, no one commented on my hair. Why would they? Because it's gone. Oh, your extensions are gone. Yep. Okay. That's what we're talking about here. Okay. Aw. <laughs> Michael said no other 
internet group I'd rather celebrate with. Um, well, did you feel weird when you got your extensions out? I feel like... Because I think uh, your hair looks good. Thanks. It feels like I have no hair, but I'm because the amount of hair that came out of my head, tomorrow I'll bring the extensions in here. I still have them. It's actually thicker than my actual hair, so it's bizarre. But So half the hairs that were on your head... More than half. Came out. Yeah. Okay. So it's very weird. Um, but... This Thursday, and I'll keep reminding you throughout the week, but this Thursday, I am taking over the Beach Waver Instagram account, and I'm going to go live on their page and do a tutorial on how to do your hair at the Beach Waver because they launched their new catwalk collection, and it's a cheetah. Like, the whole print Ooh. is cheetah. All the accessories are cheetah, and they chose me because who, hashtag cats. Who has more Instagram followers, you or Beach Waver? Uh, Beach Waver because they have 650,000. Can you make sure everyone knows to, like, tune in? Yeah. Sure. What day are you doing this? Thursday afternoon. Oh, you should have done it on Wednesday. Because right. then you could tell people to be with us on Thursday. No. Now you're going to tell people to be with us on Monday and everyone's going to forget. I'll just say go to my Instagram. Okay. Well, that works too. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you for being patient with us, letting us go on vacation and being here for us when we came back. Appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate everyone who has subscribed, gifted a subscription, uh, used Prime guys. to subscribe or cheered with some bits. Thank you very much for all the support today. We talked about Sam getting engaged, but we are planning on getting her on the show at some point this week. Who's Sam? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Yes. Hmm. I guess we'll see who she is when she joins the show. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations to Sam and our friend Josh, who... Yes, Josh Martinez. Josh Martinez does the night show on Z100 now. If you were in the Ohio area, you probably heard him on one of your stations at some point, also in Des Moines. Um... He got engaged as well the day after Sam. So congratulations to him as well. Idiots. Peace out. <laughs>